Hi, and welcome to this tutorial. Here, I'm going to show you eight great simple tips for making your VBA coding experience much nicer. And this tutorial is going to kick off a series of VBA mini projects that I'm going to show you guys how to make. And that's going to include everything from a little login system in VBA and Excel to going through all the worksheets and aggregating values that need to be updated because they're negative or too high or too low or whatever you want. We're going to make all sorts of great little mini VBA projects. And the tips I show you here are going to make our life much easier when working in VBA. And don't forget that my VBA course that'll take you from beginner to expert is on sale. And the discount for that course ends this Wednesday, January 26. So this is your last chance to get a discount on that course. And there's a link to it below this video so you can check it out. Now, go get yourself that discount, come right back here, and let's get started with the eight tips for easier coding in VBA. All right, the very first one is, what do you do if you forget what something means here in your code? What a function or a method is actually for or how to use it? All you do is click that and hit F1. It's going to automatically take you to Microsoft's online documentation for that. We clicked inside a message box, hit F1, so we get all of the information for message box, its syntax, all of the arguments for it and what they mean, and then we get the optional values. This one's for the buttons arguments, and down here, the return values. There's a lot for the message box, but if you go all the way to the bottom, you're going to get an example for how to use it. Now, sometimes this is very helpful. Sometimes it's just more confusing than helpful. But the point is that it's very easy to get more information about whatever you want here in the code window just by clicking in it and hitting F1. And for uh, this one, we have a few different examples. For some of these, you're not even going to get a help page. It'll say, hey, we couldn't find anything. But it is one quick, simple way to get more information to help you out. And another one that follows that closely is the keyboard shortcut control I. So let's go back to message box. It's kind of interesting because usually we use it for this to output a message to the user, but it can also return a value. So the button clicks. If we click in here again and hit control I, we can get a list of all the arguments. The optional ones are within brackets, but very, very helpful at the end. It tells us the value type that it's going to return. So the message box function returns a value that is a VB message box result type. Now, why is that helpful? Because we can have our variable be equal to the result of the message box. And that's going to tell us what the user clicked in the message box. And it is so much easier when we are building our code. OK, we have a little error. That's OK. Don't worry about it for now. I am doing this very quickly. Let's close that guy in parentheses. Now, if we want to check what our variable equals, if our variable equals, when we go like this, we're kind of left in the dark. What are we going to do? I don't know. I forgot. All right. Well. Click message box, control I, see that it returns the VB message box result. And then you can go up here and go dim our variable as VB message box result. Now we have our variable declared and it's the correct type. So we can go if our variable equals and look at that. Abort, cancel, ignore, no, OK, retry, and yes. This is going to make it so much easier for us. The user hits no. There we go. Then and if. We didn't have to guess at all. So that little keyboard shortcut, control I, after you click in the thing that you want to get more information about, is going to really help you reduce errors in your code and make your coding experience much, much easier. And now let's go to another keyboard shortcut that's going to be so helpful. Let's rewrite this using the keyboard shortcut that I normally use. So if our 
Control space. Done. Control space is the keyboard shortcut. What it's going to do is to take whatever you started typing and try to fill it in. And if it can't figure out what you wanted, so you typed O and then hit control space, it's going to give you a list of all the things that it matches at the top. And we start typing O, U, R, and we get our variable right there. That way we can be certain that we've typed the correct value or the correct variable, the correct function, the correct one of many, many things. Now, control space works in more than just that little situation with a variable. But if you want it to work with a variable, you must declare the variable. So dim our variable, that means it is declared. And once you declare the variable, you can autofill it. So show error cell, just type show, control space, and it autofills it. If you comment that guy out and show control space, it's not going to work. But that leads me to how else you can use control space because it's not just for variables. Let's go ahead and delete this guy down here. You can use it to autofill in pretty much anything here. So I start typing message box, MSG, control space, autofills that guy in, then space, show, control space. And of course I'm going rather quickly, so I forgot to uncomment that guy. So back that up, show, control space, and there you go. It saves you a lot of time when you're coding. But what you can also do if you forget something is just hit control space before you even start typing and then start typing. Let's say you want to start typing active, but you don't remember which one you want or how to spell it. You type AC and you get active cell, chart, printer, sheet, window, and workbook. When you find the one that you care about, you can double click it and continue to code. So control I, control space, very, very helpful keyboard shortcuts. Now, the next things I'm going to show you have to do with the interface here. And one of the most annoying things is, uh, let's say that you're typing in your code and you're making a little if check like this one down here. If error count is greater than and you forgot what it should be greater than. And maybe you accidentally go to another line and now you have to go all the way down here and click OK for the error window. Well, we can turn that off if we go to Tools and Options and uncheck Auto Syntax Check. Then hit OK. And let's recreate the error, go to another line, and we get a red line right here so we know, hey, there's a problem there, but we don't get the very annoying pop-up. Now, sometimes that pop-up can give you useful information, but I'm going to say 98% of the time, it doesn't. <laughs> it depends exactly what you're doing, but oftentimes it's something simple like this, and it's very easy to see what you did wrong. So, Tools and Options, and Uncheck Auto Syntax Check. Now, one of my favorite tips is how to quickly navigate between macros or procedures when you have a bunch of them in a module like this. Don't waste your time scrolling and looking for it. Simply go to the upper right part of the module and click the drop down menu and choose your macro from here. And it's going to take you directly to it. And if you wanted to, you could also combine that with changing the view down here in the bottom left. So click this little guy, Procedure View, and you are only going to see that procedure, so that macro, basically. And we can navigate to another one like this. And we can click the other little button down here, Full Module View, in order to get back to everything in the module, viewable at once. And when you have big procedures and large modules, what you can also do, let's say you want to keep this guy in view because you're going to be adding or referencing lots of variables, but you want to go down here and work on the code. Well, what you can do is go to Window and Split. And this right here, they are both in the same module, but we can move them independently. Now, you haven't copied the code or anything. It's two different views. That's it. So if you add stuff down here, it's going to replicate that up here. But what we can do is view these guys here or whatever you want 
and then go down here. So let's say that you want to add some more code and you need another variable. Now go up here, pop in the new variable, and you're ready to use it down here. So I really, really like that feature once your projects get bigger. Window, split, and click it again to remove it. And similar to that, what you can do is have multiple modules open at once and view them at the same time. So if you go to the right here and click this, we are going to be able to resize our windows and have multiple modules. And once you make this full screen, so not like I have here in this little tiny tutorial window, what you can do is to open up the two that you care about, close all others, and then go to a window and tile vertically. And then you can compare the code in both of them. And once you have a full screen code window, these are going to work real nice so you don't have to scroll to the right like that. And you can go through them and do whatever you need to do. Now, the last tip that I'm going to show you, this one is so important. Updating code in this window can be a terrific pain. Let's say you want to change the name of a variable or you want to add a new variable and replace certain parts of your code. Don't just go line by line with your eyes. Click what you care about and hit Control F. This is the find window. It's a pretty standard find window, but the most important part here, other than find what, what you're looking for, is this search box over here. Are we going to look in the current procedure, the current module, the current project, or just the selected text? And you can just go through. So let's do it with error count, double click, control F, and let's go find next. And the window's gonna pop up there every time I do that, annoyingly. But we can go through everything. Now let's say that you wanna replace it. Well, we can go to the replace window and then put whatever you want for the replace with right here. Make sure you choose search, the correct options for that. And then we have a replace and replace all. And of course you can cycle through it as well, one by one by clicking find next. My only tip here is don't click replace all. <laughs> that is very, very dangerous, especially if you have clicked current project over here. And then you just hit replace all. You might just end up replacing things that you did not want to replace. And that can be very dangerous and lead to a lot more than hours of headaches. I'm going to say weeks of headaches if you have a really big project. <laughs> so be very, very careful with that guy. Replace one by one is what I'd recommend if you're going to do this at all. But uh, that's it for my tips. We have learned some very important keyboard shortcuts from F1 to control I to control space how to turn off error messages, how to navigate very quickly, and change the views so that you can more easily analyze your code and go through it, as well as finding and replacing whatever you want to find and replace. And these are my eight tips for making your coding life much easier in VBA.